Om Shri Sai Ram. We are often told that the best way to do things is to do it in a manner that makes God happy. In Swami's college, in Swami's organization, we are told, do everything in a manner that makes Swami happy. Make Swami happy, bring a smile on Swami's face. This is what we are told and this is what we aspire to do as well. But that begs a question. How do I know whether Swami is happy or not, whether Swami is pleased or not? Before, when Swami was in the physical frame, I look out for physical manifestations of his joy. When he smiles, when he applauds, when he claps or when he says, Bangaru, I am very happy. Now, how do I know whether Swami is pleased or not? Bhagwan has given us beautiful ways, beautiful feedback mechanisms, ways in which we ourselves can find out whether what we are thinking, speaking and doing pleases Swami or not. And in order to highlight that message, I would like to relive one little episode that took place in the 1990s. The students from the MBA school at Prashantinilyam would often have their industrial tour at the end of the academic year. Now this industrial tour would give them the opportunity to go to different factories, different industries and get hands-on practical experience of working in all these places. But more important than that, especially for Swami students, was the fact that this industrial tour would be in Bangalore and they would all be accommodated at Whitefield, which is Swami's ashram at Brindavan. And they would get daily beautiful interactions with Swami. Now that was possibly the greater attraction than getting hands-on practical experience in these industries and factories. But this particular year, something different had happened, which was... Swami was not interacting with these students at all. In fact, all the MBA students often yearned for a Thrai session. Thrai Brindavan is Bhagwan's residence in Whitefield and Swami would often call these students inside his residence and interact with them and that would be called a Thrai session. And all the MBA students looked forward for this Thrai session but Swami was not giving Thrai sessions. See, everything Swami does has a beautiful reason and I think what he did that day has so much meaning for us because it actually gives us a way to gauge whether what we are thinking, speaking and doing is making Swami happy or not without getting physical feedback from Swami's smiles or blessings. I mean, in the times of the physical absence, this is so important and relevant. So daily Swami would come out and the students would ask Swami, please Swami, Swami call us into Thrai, Swami, please Swami, please Swami, please Swami. And as they keep telling that, Swami would look at them, smile and say, Please Swami, please Swami. And you know, walk away. Meaning, if you want me to call you for a Thrai session, if you want me to interact with you, then you please me. And they too had the same questions that we have in our mind. How do we know we are pleasing Swami? What we should do to please Swami? So they went on pleading at that time they had the chance Swami was giving them the opportunity so they kept pleading Swami please call us in please Swami please Swami then one day Swami said see after all you have come here for your industrial tour so once it's over you go back to Prashantilyam that's all right no Swami you know they all felt no Swami we have not come here for industrial tour that's just an excuse we have come here to learn things from you the industrial tour will give us lessons for living from you we get lessons for life Swami, we have come for you. So when Swami would say, you go back anyway, your industrial tour will get over. They would say, no Swami, no Swami, no Swami. Swami would again smile with a twinkle in the eye say, no Swami, K-N-O-W, no Swami and walk away. Now in this manner, you know, Swami will play on words and keep doing what he wishes and the students are getting desperate. One day, another interesting interaction happened during this industrial tour visit when Swami is denying Thrai sessions to the MBA boys. Swami came out and asked the teacher in charge who was Bhagya sir. He currently also serves in the Sri Satisa Institute of Higher Learning in an honorary capacity. So Swami asked him, where were you today morning? Bhagya sir said, Swami, I went to the bank to withdraw money for the boys. Those days there was no internet banking, mobile banking. You could not just, you know, get... Uh, uh, money so easily you had to write deposits, uh, withdrawal slips or checks and the teachers would go and withdraw money and come to the, for the students. Swami then asked Bhagya sir, Aha, so when does the bank allow you to withdraw money? Bhagya, Swami asked him. 
and knowing that some wisdom was definitely going to flow through bhagya sir kept silent swami went on swami said see if you want to get money from the bank you should have an account with the bank either a savings bank account or a current account you need to have an account or even if you don't have an account you need to have deposits with the bank fixed deposits or if you don't have an account or fixed deposits if a person of good standing who has good deposits with the bank he stands guarantor on your behalf then also the bank will give you money and then swami said i am a spiritual bank god is also a spiritual bank and god gives you grace if you have an account an account where you collect all the good acts merits where you deposit your good acts and merits then you can withdraw grace but if you don't have an account you need to have at least fixed deposits what are these fixed deposits fixed deposits are good deeds good thoughts and good words from previous births our good karma swami said if you have that then based on those good karmas also you can withdraw grace from the divine bank if you have neither of these you have neither good karmas in the past nor are you doing any good karmas in the present then if some saint some sage some saintly person noble person who has got good deposits in the spiritual bank he or she stands guarantor on your behalf and says and pleads and prays on your behalf then also you can get grace and swami said in this case not thing is there you neither have good karmas are you neither are doing good work now and swami pointing to the teachers said none of the teachers are also pleading on your behalf so how can i give that time bhagya sir said swami there's another way in which the bank gives money and swami suddenly became curious ha is it tell me bhagya what is it because you know i too am like a spiritual bank i would like to incorporate that practice also into my banking system and bhagya sir said swami there's a facility called overdraft facility where you are allowed to withdraw more than what you have deposited with the faith that you will definitely return it in the future now swami came back with another analogy swami said bhagya you are a teacher right if a student is failing in an exam by 2 or 3 marks what do you do swami i if it's just 2 3 marks swami why to papam you know make the student fail for the sake of 2 3 marks so we give grace marks 2 3 grace marks and make them pass swami said what if the student got only 2 or 3 marks will you give 33 grace marks swami no swami grace marks is just 2 or 3 marks just just if you are just failing by a bit swami said why is it called grace marks because grace is also like that for overdraft facility by little you are missing it you know by little like grace marks i can give extra grace and make that facility but is there is nothing no you can't you can't give 32 right it's just because somebody's got 3 to make him pass or her pass you can't give 32 that way i can't that's what swami said nobody had any answer so they were just silent and that was how the session ended but during the same visit another occasion you know swami was doing all this in progress first told please swami then how do you please swami then swami said you must have either good karma or you must do good action now or all the swami has said now none of this is holding good now what to do then swami so there is no hope for us swami came back another day and then swami gave the beautiful message you know every message is beautiful but swami gave a message see when we say that we are earning we have good karmas in the past that means we have done something in the past that has earned us that what is it that we have done what is it that we have done and pleased god that good things got accumulated in the past if we know that we can do it in this birth also and accumulate it at least from now on right we can start saving now at least we can make a systematic investment plan into the divine bank and that is what swami revealed swami came and again this started as a beautiful conversation and interaction where swami asked bhagya sir said you have worked in a factory before what kind of employees work in your factory and at that point in time the answer that came to bhagya sir's mind was swami basically there are two categories of employees part time employees and full time employees what are part time employees so my part time employees they get only wages based on how much work they have done that much money they get that's all 
then what are these full time employees swami full time employees uh, they don't get wages swami they get salary the difference is wages is day to day based on how many days you have worked salary is not like that it's a fixed lump sum amount which you get monthly or quarterly and uh, even sometimes you fall sick or you take a casual leave you have even an earned leave you can actually take your annual leave you are not coming for work but even then you are paid because it's a fixed amount ah so that is the benefit of the full time employee over part time employee no swami there are more benefits what is that swami the full time employee also gets dearness allowance dearness allowance is uh, uh, an inflate inflation adjusted compensatory amount because you know your your salary might not rise but if the inflation in the country is going up based on the inflation an extra amount is given to you as dearness allowance that part time workers don't get only full time employees get aha okay swami was nodding and then bagya sir said swami apart from that they also get pension privileges which is after they retire they get a monthly sum into their bank accounts even though they are not working in appreciation of being full time employees swami now smiled and swami said i do have part time devotees and full time devotees part time devotees like part time workers get their wages how much ever good they do that much they get in return but god is always happy with full time devotees and that is why full time devotees get salaried grace an assured amount of grace every now and then even though you take leave you may not do your sadhana sometimes you get it and look at swami's beautiful play on words as swami says apart from that full time devotees also get dearness allowance i give them an opportunity to become dear to me what what play on words and then swami said apart from that they will also get pension which is grace in their future births as well for having been full time employees in this birth and that is what it is we are full time employees i mean full time devotees in our previous birth we would have accumulated karma as fixed deposits which we can withdraw in this birth so in this birth if we are full time devotees then we earn we can get and then swami said full time devotion is the only true devotion mark his words only true devotion all other devotion is only part time and then swami pointed to all the students and said all part time devotees how can i give at that time bhagya sir said swami so much time we spend thinking of you interacting with you doing prayers everything if that is part time devotion swami i honestly don't think that practically we have time for full time devotion swami said that is because you are thinking that full time devotion requires time full time devotion is easier than part time devotion it doesn't require any investment of time then what is full time devotion swami what is this full time devotion that pleases you we know that swami is happy if we are full time devotees and swami said full time devotion means sukha dukhe same kritva labha labhau jaya jayo whether profit or loss whether it is happiness or sorrow whether it is victory or defeat you have to be equanimous that alone is full time devotion that is what full time devotion is and now this is the way we know whether we are pleased swami or not irrespective of what we speak what we think what we do are we equanimous if we are equanimous we can be sure that swami is pleased when we ask the question how do i know what i am thinking speaking or doing makes swami happy or swami is pleased we can judge whether swami is pleased or not by having a dashboard within our own heart am i equanimous am i excited or depressed then swami is not pleased if i am equanimous swami is pleased simple answer elegant answer beautiful answer just the way swami does now how do i be equanimous well that possibly is a subject for the next video because believe it or not swami is actually given a mantra a mantra by repeating it we become equanimous really that's a beautiful episode if you are interested in that 
do leave it leave your request in the comment section below whether you would like this mantra if that is there then possibly the next week the next video i will make on that episode where swami revealed this mantra repeating which we will grow more equanimous by growing equanimous we will be in a position to please swami and then only we can say that whatever we are doing we are doing it to please swami thank you jai sai ram